What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, going through the latest Detroit Lions news. And today, unfortunately, we have some terrible injury news. Today, we're going to go through some of the updates of the latest injury news that we have from yesterday's game against the Panthers. We also have a live stream at 2 p.m. Eastern time today on Bleach Report to talk some trade ideas for the Lions. And this could really play in with some of the injuries that we now know of. Definitely go check us out over there. And then finally, we also plan on going live tonight with Rad to talk some grades, some key plays for this game, all of those things. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to our video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with another Lions latest video. But man, I hate to do these videos, but this is such an important injury that I wanted to just do a video on it. Now, I'm adding a couple extra things to this video to update what we know so far about some of these injuries. We'll continue to get more updates as the day goes on, as the week goes on. Some of these things were just spotted at the end of yesterday, so we don't really know. But the key one that was just updated that I just saw is that Emmanuel Mosley who was injured in our last game, two plays into the game, reportedly tore his ACL. Now, apparently, this is the opposite knee for a torn ACL for Emmanuel Mosley, but this is about as devastating as it gets. We had a very serious injury, looked like there for Chandler Zavala, so again, hoping everything's okay with he, him and he'll be all right. I had heard that he had went to the hospital that day or that night, but then we also, a little bit later in the game, Emmanuel Mosley comes in, the Lions build up a little bit of a lead, and two plays later, he's sitting down on the field. And you're just looking at that saying, that can't be good. Based on where he aligned, I didn't even watch him during the snap. But just to see where he's aligned at, you could assume that that couldn't have been good to see him sitting down the field where he was at. I don't even know if it was a contact type of injury. Then you see him, takes a little bit, needs help getting off the field. Didn't look like he was walking right. Then they kind of put him on the table, and then he was standing next to it. I didn't necessarily think he was walking around, but he was standing next to it. And now we find out that he tore his ACL in the opposite knee this time around. And this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. We know he signed to a one-year deal with the Lions, had a void year next year, but about $4.2 million this season. And this was a prove-it year. We've given out a lot of these deals, especially to players that have had injuries in the past or they've missed significant amount of time in the past. But maybe when they've been on the field, they've proven like, man, this guy's legit. He just needs to find a way to stay healthy. And Mosley fell right into that category. A very good corner that has just came onto the scene these last few years, 49ers. And it was injuries that was kind of holding him back for potentially getting that deal that he was looking for. I was fired up to see him. When we found out that he was going to play we talked about it we were more excited to see Mosley than anybody because we just knew what he was about right with San Francisco you could see it the guy was so darn talented and I thought he was our most talented corner that we had on the roster it was just about getting him on the field and to build up a little bit of a lead be able to put him in the game maybe get some looks at him and that short have him taken out of the game and find out that it's this serious. This is awful. So feeling for him, man, wishing the best for him. I don't know what this means going forward. It's probably not great in terms of getting a long-term deal here or anywhere going forward. Maybe he gets another opportunity here. We'll see. But he was battling through a hamstring injury. Finally gets onto the field. Find out about this injury, which, of course, if we're looking at it from the team side of things, it puts a lot of stress on Jerry Jacobs. The great thing with that is Jerry really since Seattle has been pretty excellent. They've been able to mix in some more, I think, of the tighter press coverage looks against a team like Green Bay and then this past week he looked really start strong again so Jerry Jacobs has rose to the occasion and it seems very likely at this point in time he's going to end up getting a new deal with the Lions after this season I don't know how long that is but it seems like he's eventually going to get a new deal for the Lions so when I look at the cornerback position right now the outside cornerback position is pretty thin for the Lions in terms of depth because I think that Jerry is going to be playing himself into a new contract if the Lions wanted to go look at adding another outside corner I don't think that they necessarily have to go the same route with a guy like Mosley because Mosley felt like the type of player that it was, man, his upside is spectacular. If he proves it, this could be a long-term piece. I talked about that between a guy like Stefan Gilmore. I love the idea of adding Gilmore, but Gilmore wasn't long-term. Emmanuel Mosley had the opportunity to be long-term. So I don't think the Lions need to necessarily go that route if they wanted to just add some depth, whether that be free agency or a trade. Again, we're going to be talking about that a little bit later today, so go check it out because we'll probably talk about this situation as well. But I do think it is something that the Lions could legitimately be thinking about now is adding some help to that room. The good thing is, is that a guy like Khalil Dorsey is eligible to return off of IR. He was placed on there, of course, four weeks ago with illness, so I'm not really sure what that means. That doesn't sound great, but he's eligible to return. We saw him play really strong in the preseason. Every game was pretty much good from him. He worked his way up on the Lions depth chart seemingly, played on the outside. He also has some slot in his background, but he looked really good. I think he fits perfectly schematically. He felt like a player that was kind of ready to 
go right now. Maybe maybe didn't have the athletic upside of a player like Starling Thomas, who is now with the Arizona Cardinals, but he looked ready to play right now. Like you put that guy in the game, put him on the outside, and you could trust that he was going to handle his business. So getting that piece back potentially could be massive. Of course, you have Will Harris, and then of course you have Stephen Gilmore as well. That is one of those UDFA's that you get some hut hit, yeah, you get some hit and miss with, but the talent is there, and we saw that with just the amount of plays that he made on the football in the preseason. But I do think it's something the Lions could consider. I won't go all the way down that path because I want to talk about it a little bit more today. But one guy that has caught my eye setting up for this video is an Amik Robertson from the Las Vegas Raiders. Just someone to think about if the Lions want to look that way. It's a young player, rookie deal, sort of similar to Emmanuel Mosley in that sense, but he's kind of out of role now because of what they've added to that room. But I think he would fit schematically. He's physical. He's a little bit undersized. So Lions could look that route. Of course, you can go the Pats or Tan routes, which would probably cost a lot more to add that type of piece. One of the better corners, what we've seen in the past in the league, maybe not so far this year. So the Lions could look into those avenues as well, or maybe they just roll with what they have in house. I think at very least they'll probably add someone in free agency, maybe at least to the to the practice squad to try to add some depth there. But this is obviously tough for what we have in terms of depth. We know Will Harris can play on the outside, though I think schematically speaking, it's much more comfortable for him playing in zone than man. Though we've seen seemingly more of that so far this season. The point being... I feel terrible for Emmanuel Mosley. This is awful. I was so excited to see him. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just watching him, you know, you could just see him in warm-ups, and you were fired up like, oh, he's number four. I didn't even know what number the guy was. You're just fired up to see him out there. And I, I remember sitting, and you could just see him, and it was like when he came on the field, that'd be a sweet jersey to have. The number four, it looks great. And then to see that. It's awful. It's awful that he didn't get that opportunity. So, you know, I, I have to give you guys that update. There are updates that we have, and these are more so from yesterday. We'll probably know more a little bit later as the day goes on. Josh Pascal, however, is also eligible to return off of injury reserve, which could be a big addition for the Lions just to give them some defensive line depth. They have a few players that are kind of on the horizon that can be eligible to return, like James Houston, which would be week seven, which again could give us some edge depth. We just got Julian back, and I don't even think Julian played a snap in this last game. So that could give him some flexibility again at the trade block as well. Uh, got like CJ Gardner Johnson, but it sounds like he's probably out for the season. So I don't think he's actually in line to come back this year. Jason Gabinda finds himself there. But off of yesterday, Jonah Jackson was spotted in a walking boot, which would not be great for the guard depth. Okay, now having Big V back gives us flexibility with Graham Glasgow. However, it's not great. Something little where it's just more cautionary than anything. So hopefully nothing super serious there. But I guess we'll learn more as the week goes on. Then also Zonovan Knight, the running back, who went down after taking what seemed like a pretty big hit. He was kind of just laying flat on his back. And he was wearing a spotted wearing a sling after the game that posted setback on social media. So that doesn't sound great either there. Again, could, could force the Lions to want to add some running back depth. He's kind of became running back three for the Lions at this point. We saw Craig ball out last year, last week. So we feel like we have our two. And then if Jameer Gibbs come back that kind of puts us at three so and Jameer Gibbs according to Dan Campbell wasn't necessarily ready it wasn't good enough to play but he was listed as questionable after popping up on the injury report on Friday so I don't think it's going to be long term there just based on what we've heard from Dan Campbell we saw him walking out with the team out of the tunnel so it doesn't seem like that's going to be a super long-term type of injury that he's dealing with so we should immediately get some depth back there as well but those are the injury updates that we have so far but I, I hate this for Mosley. I was so pumped to see him this season. I really think he has a ridiculous amount of talent. So to hear this is just awful. And it could force the Lions to start to say, okay, we might have to add a little bit of depth. Just because we know our defensive season has been built on having depth and be able to rotate as the season goes on. Being able to go to, from three to four and trust that guy's going to step in. Or it could be leaning on Khalil Dorsey if he can get back. Hopefully that's the case. Stephen Gilmore having him if you need to on the outside. So they could just lean that direction as well. But with that being said, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.